Let's try that again. Good morning. Thank you for those that are uh, brave enough to come out this morning and hear my message. Uh, as you know, I am not Pastor Susan. She's on vacation this week, uh, and we'll be back home on Tuesday. Uh, my name is Tom Hauer, and as a lay leader of the church, it's my job to uh, assist the pastor. And I hope at the end of the service today you get something out of it so you think that uh, I accomplished that. Uh, I know she's going to be watching the recording, so she told me I already have to behave. So. Uh, there'll be no acting up, and I'll, I'll try to be as good as I can. I just want to call your attention to uh, a few announcements. There are some dates in the bulletin that I just want to review. Uh, today is the noising offering, so get that ready. Uh, Thursday, July the 1st, there'll be at 6 o'clock, there'll be a fellowship meeting. And on July the 6th at 6, there'll be a trustees meeting, followed by an administration uh, board meeting at 7. Uh, food distribution will take care uh, or take place on uh, July the 13th. I'd like to welcome Diana Seeley back from her vacation in Florida. She actually went on vacation so that her daughter and her husband could go on vacation. Her replacements at piano were nice, but we've, we've missed Diana, so it's nice to have her back. Uh, she did tell me this week that uh, Sanctuary Choir will be back in the fall, and she's hoping that the uh, faithful will return. Uh, there's no pay involved, but the rewards are great, and uh, she's signing contracts any time now, so if you're interested, uh, please get in touch with her, and she'll be happy to set you up. As we go through the service today, please be aware of the numerous references to scars. Each of us have scars, and each scar tells a story. Some may be physical, some may be emotional, some may be visible, some may not be visible. Jesus, too, suffered scars, and we're going to talk about that. Let's begin our service together as we quietly listen to the prelude.
Amen. As I was sitting there listening to that, I'm looking at the beautiful stained glass windows at the rear of the church. Before you leave today, make sure you take a look at that. Because just the way the sun is glistening off those windows, they're just magnificent. Our call to worship this morning is in a little black book. It's on page 2128, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Please join us and stand if you're able. join together in the opening prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. When Pastor Susan and I got together to uh, go over what we wanted to do this morning, uh, she told me I could make some changes, so <laughs> this first hymn is one of them. Again, following along with our, the theme that I wanted to create for the entire service was about scars. And the first hymn... Uh, through it all. It's on page 507 of the hymnal. It was written by uh, Andre Crouch, and if you're not familiar with him, he was a very well-known gospel singer and songwriter and spent many years traveling with the Billy Graham Crusades and the uh, Gaither Homecoming events. What we have in our hymnal is only the chorus version of that song. There are other words, and I want to share two of those verses with you this morning. So what we're going to do is Diana's going to play the chorus. We're going to sing that. I'm going to read a verse. Then we're going to sing the chorus again. I'm going to read a second verse, and we'll sing a chorus for the third time.
I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials came to only make me strong. You see now I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys and I thank him for the storms that he brought me through for I'd never had a problem I'd never know that God could solve them I'd never know what faith in his word could do so I'm singing Let's join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Since we have, you may be seated. Since we have no children this morning, uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to have the noisy offering. We're just going to give the uh, ushers double duty this morning. So when it's time for the offering to take place, we'll have the ushers uh, take care of that as well. But we do, one of the things I wanted to do was, um, I was not going to have a children's message this morning, but I wanted to take us all back to our childhood days in, in church and Sunday school when we sang, Jesus Loves Me. So because there's no kids here, we're still going to do one verse of Jesus Loves Me, and it's found on page 191. You can remain seated. for our joys and concerns, and we have some of each. Joys this morning, a happy birthday to Gail Messina, who celebrates her birthday today. Uh, Becky Ermish, who celebrates her birthday on June 30. Uh, Carol Lanning, who celebrates her birthday on July 1. And Emma Jane Lynn, who celebrates her birthday on July the 3rd. And they're having fireworks on her birthday, just so you, so you know that. <laughs> 
Uh, happy anniversary to Jeff and Amory Seeley, who celebrate their anniversary today, and also to TJ and Daniel Hauer, who recently celebrated their sixth anniversary. We do have concerns, and I'm sure that some concerns will not be heard this morning that I will be speaking, but I know that there will be some in your heart that you want to share. Continued prayers for Ernie Lynn and Joan Gearhart as they are recovering from surgery. Uh, prayers are lifted for Dora Durr and Steve Claris and others who are experiencing health issues. And we really want to remember the victims and the families of the people in the building collapse in Florida. And on a more personal note, uh, Valerie Askew, my niece, has been on our prayer list for quite some time. Sorry. She's 63 years old and now on hospice with a couple of weeks to live. So please pray for her. That's ending with a time of silent prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to work, worship together this morning, whether it be in person or online. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of salvation that you have paid for us at great cost to you. We know that you experienced many scars. We lift up those who are recovering from surgery and those who are battling health issues, asking your hand upon them. Father, you are the great physician. You know our needs much better than we do. So we ask for courage, strength, comfort, and peace. And Father, for the prayers that are held in our hearts, those that were not heard aloud, but were lifted up to you silently, we know that you heard them all. We lift up the men and the women serving this country, our law enforcement officers, the first responders, and all frontline workers asking for a hedge of protection around them. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn this morning, again, trying to follow along a theme of scars and, and uh, peaks and valleys. Uh, hymn number 288, Were You There? says, Were you there when Jesus was crucified? They nailed him to the tree. They pierced him in the side. And they laid him in a tomb along with two others. Just remember, though, three men were killed. As we sing this hymn, don't just sing. Try to concentrate on the words, too. And just try to imagine the wounds that he suffered, cuts that were open, and the scars that he would have had as a result of that. And just imagine his poor mother, Mary, seeing those scars. Let's sing together hymn number 288, Were You There? Please stand if you're able.
Please be seated. Were you there? Our scripture this morning is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, uh, verses 3 to 5. And again, this kind of ties in with the theme of scars. Uh, and it's found on uh, the Pew Bible on page three, uh, 683, if you want to follow along. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one from whom men would hide their faces because he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes and scars, we are healed. The word of God for the people of God. The message this morning, I, I can't take the credit or the blame for it. This is not a Howard original. The um, conference uh, has an annual meeting, the Susquehanna Conference, and that was held last Friday and Saturday. And... Um, all the pastors and lay, a lot of lay people participate in that. And um, they suggested to pastors that they take some time off uh, following the annual meeting uh, to kind of reflect on the past year with the COVID and the things that the pastors had to deal with, uh, empty churches trying to reach the congregation uh, in ways other than uh, an in-person service on a Sunday. So Pastor Susan decided she uh, wanted to do that. 
and uh, asked me if I would fill in, so I'm, I guess I'm honored that uh, <laughs> she had enough guts to ask me to do this, because she didn't know what I was going to say. So the, the message this morning is not an original. Um, the conference, and knowing that a lot of lay persons like myself would be uh, serving today, uh, actually offered about four or five sermons. Um, I, I chose one of those, but not the whole thing, because I think that's a pastor that like to talk a lot. So I'm going to give you the Howard modified version of, of that message this morning. It's a sermon by uh, Reverend Judy Walker of the Susquehanna Annual Conference, and here are her opening remarks. Thanks to Reverend Victoria Rebeck, our Susquehanna Conference Director of Connectional Ministries, for collaborating on this time of worship and providing the liturgy for today's worship. I also give thanks for those who are participating and for those of you joining us in offering this time of Sabbath rest to your pastors. Now, here's your message. In the past, I've preached on the gospel that focused on Thomas, on doubt and belief and the fine line that separates the two. I've preached on the peace that Jesus brings in the midst of fear. I've preached on Jesus breathing out the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, but today I'm drawn to Jesus and the wounds inflicted upon him by the crucifixion, the scarring still freshly evident from those wounds and the intimate invitation to Thomas to touch them. She then turned to WebMD to find out more about wounds and scars. The wounds are injuries to living tissue. They can include cuts, scrapes, scratches, and punctured skin. When we or someone else touches a wound, there's a natural hurt. It's an involuntary reaction to pull back. Wounds without proper treatment can begin to fester and spread, and if not treated properly, can actually become deadly. Now, scars are a natural part of the body's healing process. A scar results from the biologic process of wound repair in the skin and other tissues. Most wounds, except for some very minor ones, often result in some degree of scarring. So again, my apologies to those who can offer much better medical explanations, but from what I understand, wounds are injuries that are still unhealed. Scars develop from wounds that are in the process of healing or have healed. We know not that all wounds are physical. It's the physical wounds that are often easy to see, but wounds in our souls are often raw and unhealed too. Something has happened that cut deep in our mind and our emotions or our spirit. These wounds, if left untreated, can also fester and spread and become deadly. These deep wounds can be healed too. And even though not seen, it can still leave scars. Scars remind us of wounds in our lives, and I believe that every scar tells a story. Jesus, too, had scars. The marks of the nails in his hands, a spear in his side. And we have heard in the gospel on the very evening of Christ's resurrection that the risen Lord appeared to the disciples and after greeting them with peace, showed them his scars. Notice that before his appearance, the disciples were hunkered down in fear together. They were locked behind closed doors. Yet once they saw his hands and his side, a transformation occurred, and they began to rejoice. Like Thomas, touching upon the marks, the scars replied with what many theologians describe as the central truth of the gospel, as he declared, my Lord and my God. God fully was revealed in Christ. How ironic that seeing and touching scars, which were produced by pain, provided such joy and hope. Just three days before, those scars were deep wounds that were on full display, inflicted by the ravages of what religion and empire can do to the body. His forehead lacerated from the thorns, his back shredded from the scourging, his hands and feet impaled by the nails, his abdomen carved open by the spear. It is these very wounds that remind us that we cannot just skip from Palm Sunday 
to Easter morning. The wounds that Jesus suffered remind us of the dark days in between those, those days and the suffering that Jesus went through out of God's love for the world to offer redemption from the sin that wounds. Jesus felt deep pain, and through his resulting resurrection and scars, we are able to feel deep redemption. We are able to feel hope and renewal, and yes, we are called to rejoice. Every scar tells a story. Folks, what scars do you have? Our own personal scars can have a positive effect on both our family and our community. And we need to talk about our scars. We need to talk about how we overcame the wounds that they represented. It can mean the world to those who are in the grip of doubt and fear and perceived helplessness. But to not know suffering and loss negates the truth of the gospel. Jesus' version of, just, of a just world was met with the rejection and violence. We cannot avoid suffering. We have wounds, and we will inflict wounds. You know, in today's world, there are deep wounds in our society. The scourge of racism, the blight of COVID, the destruction of creation, the iniquities of greed, suffering in all forms that need to see the scars of our wounded healer. There are deep wounds in the lives of people all around us that need to hear the stories about our wounds and to know the hope that comes with the scars. By our scars, we have become to one another what God is to us, the embodiment of justice, mercy, peace, hope, and joy. You've got scars. I've got scars. Perhaps you're covered with wounds, and some scars are still forming. It's not that we should be proud of our scars, but we shouldn't be embarrassed by them either. More than anything, we should be willing to tell their stories. I've always believed in the power of stories, and I certainly believe in the power of the resurrection of Christ that has the power to turn our scars into stories of hope and new life. Let us pray. Resurrected Jesus, from the view we have, our pain and struggles often seem without meaning. Lord, be our courage and strength. Bring us to a place where the pain eases and the rejoicing begins, to a place where we can share our story. Remind us of your hope in the wounds that heal and leave a scar a scar that will give us a story to bring to the nations and tell of your great redeeming love. Amen. The ushers will come forward. We'll share our tithes and our offerings. <clears throat>
Let's join together in a prayer of dedication. Gracious God, your heart is wide open to us. You have given to us freely and taught us to return to you a portion of what we have. Grant us glad and generous hearts and help us be as open to you as you are to us. Help us use your gifts wisely and for the benefit of all your people. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is entitled, Take My Life and Let It Be. It's on page 399 of the hymnal. And as we sing this final hymn this morning, try to think about not just the music, but the words, take my life and let it be. Let Jesus help with your scars. Let him heal the wounds. Let him take your moments and your days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Hymn number 399. Take my wife. Yeah, my wife. <laughs> take my life and let it be. <laughs>
Each of us will show our scars in different ways and in different places. But our best moments will most likely come from those places where we have been scarred the most, where we have suffered or have caused suffering. Be with us, Jesus, as we deal with those scars and know that you will be with us always. Amen.